Hello, and welcome to installing SQL Server Management Tools, specifically SQL Server Management Studio. To do this, uh, we can get to that location to download that product multiple ways. If you were following along in my previous video, you can just click this link here, and it will take you directly to Microsoft's download page for SQL Server Management Studio. I will make a link to this in the uh, information section for this video. We want to download SQL Server Management Studio version 17. This is the most apropos one. It is the latest version. It just came out recently, at least when this video was made, just a couple few weeks ago. So I've already downloaded it. If you need to download it, feel free to pause the video while you're downloading it. It's not quite a gigabyte, so it shouldn't take too long, hopefully, for you. And it also is free. There are pretty significant upgrades and benefits to using this current version. I like it a lot. Uh, it seems to be a lot snappier than previous versions and a lot better in many ways. I'm really happy with this one. So in our case, we've already got it downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and close my browser window here. So all I need to do since I've got it downloaded is I'll just go over here to the setup file and double click the setup file that you downloaded or that you have. And here we are at the install screen. This probably, I don't know if this could actually be easier to install. I don't think it could. It's about as simple as it gets. You run this front page screen and click install. You will need to have administrator rights as per usual. Click yes on user account control here. And now all you have to do is wait. It'll download what it needs and it will do the install. So I'll kind of be quiet and speed this up and I'll see you on the other side. Right, looks like she finished. So we do need to do a restart in order to get the setup to finish. So we'll go ahead and click on restart. And we can close the installation center now. And that closes all the windows. So now all we have to do is do a restart. So I like to show you sometimes something special or at least something that isn't as commonly known. So we'll just do a Windows key R here and open up a command prompt with CMD. Here we are now at a command prompt. So I can type in shutdown forward slash R for reboot forward slash T for timeout value. And I want it to reboot right now. So we'll enter zero. And that's just a quick way if you're a quick typist a little bit easier than going and having to find it through the mouse buttons. So it's just shut down forward slash R for reboot forward slash T for timeout. And we'll set it to zero so it does it immediately. Enter. And a restart occurs. So we're gonna restart our virtual machine here. Shouldn't take very long. There isn't much it has to do. It just has to register some stuff that it cannot do while the machine is running. Pretty typical Windows scenario, though honestly, most many things in Windows now don't require a restart, which is really nice. Even video drivers don't require a restart in many cases, which is awesome. Boy, what a difference from the old days. Huh? If you remember Windows in the old days, it's like everything required a restart. You know, you, you looked at it the wrong way and it's like, oh, got to reboot. No, not anymore. I like it. All right. So here we are at our login screen. Go ahead and hit the enter key. Put in zip password. And she comes back in. So Management Studio should now be installed. Uh, looked like everything worked okay. Let's go ahead and run it. Uh, I always like to verify that things did install properly. So let's do that now. Do your Windows key. And just in this, type in Manage Ment. And you should see... Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio right there. You might have to use your arrow keys to select it because it hasn't been selected before in my case, uh, probably in yours too. So go ahead and select that and press enter. 
and that will run Management Studio. And here she is coming up. It'll take it a little bit. It's got to get its initial state set up. Got to load some new components and load some user settings, things like that. Typical Visual Studio first start behavior, since this is based on Visual Studio. So it'll take a little bit. Not too long. And here we are. And as you can see, the connect to server window has now opened. So we are capable of connecting to the server that is on this machine or another one. In my case, server name is Doniger, this machine. So we should be good. We're going to use Windows authentication. Uh, I always want to show people one other option too here. If you click on options here, you will see the option to encrypt your connection. Uh, we do not need to do this for this session, but it is nice to do this, especially if you're using it across the network to a SQL server that is not on your local machine. Uh, if the admin has not selected to encrypt all connections, I will show you how to do that in a later video. But if that has not been done, we can select it on our end to make sure that our session does not leak any data. Because uh, sometimes that can be bad. So in our case, though, we don't need to do that. I'm just going to go back to the login tab. Looks good. And click connect. And she should connect just fine. Yay. Let me shrink this down a little bit. All right. So we're going to test to see if this actually worked. Uh, so first off, let's go ahead and expand databases and expand system databases. So far, so good. I can see our four major databases that are needed for SQL Server. Expand master. Expand tables. Expand system tables. And we should now see the system tables underneath the master database. Looking good. Test number one, let's make sure that we can see what's in this table. So we'll go ahead and right click on this one and just say select top 1000 rows and click on that. So right click on that and then select top 1000 rows. You should run a query. Hey, looking good. Our query worked. Yay. Now go ahead and close that query. So just click on the X here. Let's do one other thing just for fun. Select new query. So click on that. And I'm going to kick my font size up so it's a little easier for you all to see. All right. So I'm going to say use master go. That will switch the database context to the master database. And then we'll just make a quick sample database just to make sure that we have the proper rights. So create database, test me, and go. Execute the query. You can just hit F5 if you want to run it that way, or you can click the button here either way. Hey, I'm seeing command completed successfully. That's always a good sign. Now, over here, underneath your databases directory, you'll notice that under that folder, the test me did not appear yet. That's because normally Microsoft tree controls do not update automatically. They do not update when changes occur. So we will need to refresh this probably. So just right click on databases and select refresh. And that will collapse that folder, but you should now see the test me database. And if I right click on that and go to properties, looking good. Our database exists and it was successful. So in our next video, uh, if you're going to follow this along, I'm going to install the sample databases. I'm going to install the sample database for SQL Server 2016, AdventureWorks, and also Northwind, which is an older, an older one. So we'll have the newest database sample, AdventureWorks database sample, and Northwind. I'll probably make it three different videos just so it can be specific to the individual databases that we install. It just seems like a good idea. All right. Thank you very much and appreciate your time. Hopefully you enjoyed and subscribe if you did. Go ahead and close this out. We don't need to save that. Hopefully we'll see you again. Thank you.